So we just found this one restaurant here. I know we said we'd go to the other one, but this one's menu looks a little more reasonable. So we came here. They have the same dishes as uh, the Posada had. It's called Vittoria Restaurant and Bar. And it's it looks very classic, like a typical old Portuguese house. I don't know if you can see it all the way, but yeah, let's go in and have something for brunch. Shishira is already inside, so let's go check it out. Hello. Hello, time for some food. I think we should order a mixed veg noodles and maybe one lemon iced tea for Naveed and an iced coffee for Shishira. Oh, I think she figured it out. So, the fruit juices are $2 each, but you can get for $1 iced coffee and iced tea. So, she has found the loophole and decided no fruit juice, she will have iced coffee. Yes, I want my coffee. It's been so long. Yes. Oops, you are not able to drink it. so good it's without milk but still it tastes yummy so in the rest of the country they just give you hot water coffee powder and sugar how much ever i mix it i would that coffee powder residue would still remain and it would never taste this good i don't know this is too good it's cold iced coffee obrigado I did the chicken cross the petrol box. such a long queue for petrol.
So we were on our way to Kribas waterfall. Uh, we couldn't find it correctly on the map, so we went till the spot which the Google Maps told was the waterfall. But then we couldn't find it there, so we went to a local shop and asked the person there where we can see this waterfall. He directed us to a small turn uh, and said go that way in a sign language. So we came there. As soon as we entered within a few meters, we spotted a bunch of people just sitting on the ground chit chatting and so many kids around. We tried to ask them again where the waterfall was. I was a little scared because everybody looked at us like as if we were aliens and um, finally we were somehow able to ask them and then they directed us to a path and three kids even followed us all the way for about 200 meters. They were like running behind our scooter. And at one point it was very steep and I had to get down and Namit had to ride up along, alone. So at that time even the kids were helping us push the scooter up. A few minutes we spotted a biker, he was going towards the direction of the waterfall. Uh, he just went ahead, did not speak to us and after a few more minutes he came back. That was in the opposite direction. I got scared, I was like he went that way, why is he coming back so fast? Is he following us? He had a smiling face which made me even more uncomfortable like I was scared when he was following us and he might steal something from us or talk to us but then this time Namit asked him uh, which side was the waterfall he pointed us to the direction and then we let him go ahead of us we followed him for a few meters but then uh, the road got even more worse but then we spotted three dogs and a, and a very old man walking uphill I was so scared, we were lonely that I could not see anybody. Even if we want to call somebody for safety, I don't think there's any network here. So we thought about it for some time and then we decided to turn back before, you know, before anything bad happens or before we see any other human who might harm us going back. Again. So now we are almost down, I think there's another few hundred meters. Oh look, the kids have come back again.
Ah, super. We're now on the way back to Delhi and was not the very best ending to this vlog because the waterfall is supposed to be very beautiful. Uh, even on Google Maps, there's only three reviews that are there till date. So it is very remote and maybe sometimes it's best to listen to the gut feeling than to be adventurous. Yeah. And uh, now we're on our way back and we just stopped at this beautiful viewpoint. We're just sitting beside the road and just enjoying the views. It's very windy. Bye. One other thing we, that we wanted to share was uh, something that our homestay host and our friend Armando told us. Uh, a couple of nights ago, actually day before yesterday, there was a very brutal murder just a kilometer away from our homestay. And this isn't just a one-off thing, it happens very often with the youth here. So, uh, both of them suggested that we come back to our room before sunset, like around 7 o'clock in the evening. And they told step out only if it's like very, very urgent and an emergency. And beyond 9 o'clock, they said don't even think about going outside. So even our homestay has like this huge metal gate yeah. and our rooms are also like, it's almost like being barricaded. And there's a big dog which barks at anybody who comes inside including us. So clearly when we felt it was very adventurous, we decided to leave from there and it's probably the best thing that we did. I mean, we could be traveling offbeat in an already offbeat country, but I think maybe for this visit this is enough. Safety is more important. So we're gonna head back now and then we'll catch up with you again in another vlog. So see you later. So you might be curious about the food situation here in Timor-Leste. Historically, this region was a part of, you know, what was a common uh, culture between Indonesia and here. Therefore, the people are not very different. Even the food that they consume is very similar, most of it being centered around rice and meat. So the typical um, everyday dish for most people here is rice. Um, and therefore, in restaurants, you get the same nasi goreng, which we used to find in Indonesia. Uh, we are not very fond of it, but it's still okay because it's familiar food and we can have some of that. The other food items that are more special here are like spaghetti, um, pizza, and that has to do more with the Western influence. There are a few Portuguese dishes as well, but since we are so clueless about this, we don't know what exactly to order and whether it will be vegetarian or not. Hopefully in the next few days, we can meet someone who will help us narrow down on our food choice and then we can show you again. We've come back now to Jay's restaurant and we're going to have some veg food today. This looks like potato. That's called chow chow, he said. This is jackfruit, that's cassava leaves, tempeh. Tahu and the potato, okay. that's chow chow and that's salad I think, yeah. So today we have come in time, so we get veg food. And Jay said that this is typically what the Timorese eat. Uh, it's very similar to Indonesian food, they were both very similar. And then this is the meat variety. Oh, it smells really nice. And so much veg food for once. Spice level is amazing. And Shish doesn't like tempeh, but it's my favorite now. Do you like it, Shish? No. Shish still doesn't like tempeh. So Jay just surprised us with Indian pickle, which we haven't wow. had in six months. Lemon pickle. Ah, it smells so good. 